lab studies the biology and the pathology associated with one of the most common infections in humans, and that is infection with Epstein-Barr virus or EBV, um, which is a herpes virus that is carried mostly silently, but occasionally causes some pathologies in the host. And one of our main interests is investigating the link between EBV infection and multiple sclerosis, since primary symptomatic EBV infection is uh, particularly a risk factor for developing MS. So uh, initially we examined over a um, thousand post-mortem brain samples from MS and non-MS cases, and we could frequently detect EBV encoded RNAs, EBERs, and other var proteins in uh, MS tissues. And the virus is highly prevalent in the MS cases. And we found out that the virus is found in its primary target, B cells, as well as um, other CNS resident cells, uh, astrocytes, and microglia. Um, since while this data suggests a possible link between the virus and multiple sclerosis, um, what the exact role of EBV in MS is still unclear. So we utilize um, a rabbit model for EBV infection and we injected uh, the virus intravenously into a group of rabbits and that is our EBV group and another group with saline and that served as control. And we sacrificed both groups at day 14 post-infection. We collected brain, spinal cord, among other important tissues. And um, naturally you would want to know what happens in the CNS or what changes that could occur as a result of the virus being in the bloodstream. So um, sections from the brain uh, of all animals in both groups were examined histopathologically for um, histopathologically under H and E and we found that some animals in EBV group, but not in control group, develop in prominent uh, pockets of cell aggregates in the brain parenchyma. And we wonder whether these aggregates were restricted to specific anatomical regions within the brain. So we took one brain hemisphere that had these aggregates and we sectioned it entirely. And uh, it turned out that these aggregates were scattered throughout um, different regions of the brain and they formed bilaterally as well. Then what about EBV? Can it cross from the uh, periphery into the CNS? The answer is yes. We could detect uh, EBERS and uh, another important latent viral antigen that is IBNA1 in the uh, brain of uh, the animals in EBV group. And uh, these infected cells were scattered also in different regions of the brain. However, um, their presence did not correlate with the presence of the uh, aggregates. So animals that did not develop aggregates still had infected cells in the brain. And another question that was raised is uh, what these cells are made up of? So uh, we stained for different cellular markers, including the um, GFAP for astrocytes, which you can see here, they uh, surround the cell aggregates. And like the uh, RAM11 positive cells, uh, which are macrophages, blood derived macrophages that make up the center of these aggregates. And we can also see some um, B and T lymphocytes, which usually make up the, the rim of the, of the aggregates. And um, we also see no evidence of demyelination or disruption of myelin, um, myelin basic protein uh, as a result of the formation of these aggregates in the brain. So in conclusion, the study indicates that yes, peripheral EBV infection can uh, lead to infection in the CNS and um, in some cases, but not all, neuroinflammation develop. And this provides an evidence for um, neuropathogenic role of the virus in its host. Um, finally, thank you. I thank um, people involved in this work and the funding sources as well. Thank you. Very much. Thanks for that. That was super. I'm not quite sure whether we're meant to allow questions, but you've got through time quickly. If somebody has a burning question, please post it now in the ask a question slot. Um, and whilst we see if there is a question for you, maybe I will 
Um, oh, maybe Ben's got a question. Ben has just joined us. Whilst, but whilst he's thinking, let me ask you, first of all, you showed, I think, some human data to begin with, didn't you? That your top, uh, your initial slides were human data. Um, what, what, in those papers, were there control patients as well who did not have MS? The, yeah, so we had non MS cases from other neurological diseases and no neurological diseases as well. Okay, great, fantastic, thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any posted questions, and also I'm not sure we're meant to be allowing them, but uh, so in which case we will just thank you for your presentation and wish you good luck with your exam. When is your PhD exam? In September. Okay, so you're just writing up at the moment. Great, well, good luck with that. Thank, thank thanks you. so much.